So barn dominiums have become very popular lately, and so we thought we'd shoot you kind of a barn dominium 101 video. Um, today we're lucky enough to have Stacy Lynn with us. She's known as the barn dominium lady, and uh, she's going to teach you everything you need to know about barn dominiums. I'm Paul Rubio, and welcome to the Metal Roofing Learning Channel. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. So Stacy, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today about barn dominiums. Um, so I'm just going to start with like the most basic question, like what is a barn dominium? What is a barn dominium? You know, it really means different things to different people. It also really depends on where you're located in the United States. If you're, say, in the upper Midwest region um, or in the Rockies, chances are you're thinking of a barnuminium as a wood frame barnuminium or a post frame. It's also known as a pole barn or an engineered wood truss system. But if you're in the south or southeast, eastern part of the United States, then people, when they hear the term barnuminium, think about steel. So it's a steel frame barnuminium. So you have a post frame barnuminium and a steel frame barnuminium. But what makes both of these construction types barnuminiums is that the entire weight of the roof system, the entire weight of the roof system is carried along the perimeter, which means it's like a big warehouse inside. And during construction, um, you can move a lot of those walls. You can just back and forth. Oh, you know, I think I want this wall, this, this room to be about a foot bigger. No, you know, I think I can make this one 18 inches smaller. It is, you have lots of options, but when the roof is, when the weight of the roof is carried on the perimeter, you can do just about anything you want inside that, that metal shell. So you've discussed one of the biggest advantages of the Barnuminium, which is the flexibility and the, the big open design like everybody wants. What are some other advantages of a Barnuminium and, and then what are the main disadvantages of a Barnuminium? Well, both barnuminiums are, are typically uh, cladded in sheet metal, either an R panel or a corrugated panel, and then they have either an R panel or a um, maybe a standing seam roof on the on the roof. Um, but all either way, it's mostly cladded in metal. Sometimes they'll add a stone skirting or some stone accents, but for the most part, it's all in metal. Um, and when you insulate a metal building the right way, it becomes um, very energy efficient. And that's why you can get a lot lower energy bills in your, your barn aluminium with say proper uh, insulation with spray foam, um, using some awnings, some LED lighting, that sort of thing. You can really keep your utility bills down. So very energy efficient. Second of all, when you're building in the country, just like any place else, time is money. It's actually much easier and faster if all the materials are there, just like in a traditional build, if all the materials are there in a steel building or in a, in a post frame building, that can go up pretty quickly. That can go up in a matter of probably two weeks after concrete pour, wow. three weeks after concrete pour, you can be totally closed in. Wow, that's impressive. So speed of build then is one of the other primary advantages to, to a steel barn aluminum? Yeah, the speed of the build, because for example, if you were building something that had a board and batten, so in those cases, you still have to have a OSB or a plywood substrate, and then you have to attach the board and batten. Then you've got to caulk and prime and paint. Whereas with a sheet of metal panel, it's already painted. When it goes up, it's done. You fasten it, it goes up, it goes up in minutes compared to um, you know, days trying to put up the same amount of square footage in sure. a masonry component. Sure. So what would be the main disadvantages of a, bar, of a barn dominium be? Um, disadvantages of a bar I mean, uh, you have it's, it appeals to a certain type of market marketplace. So resale could potentially be slightly um, challenging. That's that's a very that's a very possibility. I think that the more and more people understand what a barnuminium is and see how popular that they're going to getting, I think that could change. Uh, so some people say, I'm not sure I want to live in a, in a metal building until they walk inside, and then a lot of a lot of cases they say, Oh, I want to live in a barnuminium. But so. So that's one of the, the, the disadvantages. Um, another of the disadvantages I think for, from a barnuminium is that if you are going for a certain kind of look, you could be going, you want a certain kind of look. Now there is a board and bat metal panel these days that looks just like a, a, a board and bat for those people that want that. But there's our people that, that we're working with that want stucco. 
um, and some more stone or brick. And that really changes the starts to change the savings that you make in a barn dominium. So you, you've talked about the savings. So when you compare a barn dominium to a typical house, is it is there some savings? Is it about equal in price? How do you what's the cost comparison? Um, the savings comes in on the perimeter of the build because the build the shell can go quite uh, pretty fast uh, in a in a steel building. Um, you can get dried in much much quicker. Time is money, so the speed of the build is is saving you money. The other thing about a barn dominium is it doesn't have as many layers uh, on the, along the exterior. In a traditional home, you probably have a brick or stone or stucco. Then you have a vapor barrier. Then you have plywood or, or OSB. Uh, then it's attached to the, the wood frame, insulation, and then your sheetrock or whatever your finished material is. Those are multiple layers in a traditional home. In a barn dominium, typically about 95% of barn dominiums that are built these days have their steel frame, their steel sheet attached to the steel frame with the wood uh, wood in between it, filled with spray foam insulation and then sheet rock. So it doesn't have that extra couple of extra layers that you traditionally see in a home. So you're saving on material, you're saving on labor to put it in, you're saving on um, just to add, to add that component to a barn and build. In a house, you add that, um, and so that adds to the cost. Um, but those are vapor barriers and extra protection that some people are starting to now include in their barn and mini built, but it hasn't gotten there all the way yet. Now, I understand every house is different and, and it could be as expensive or inexpensive as your design, but generally, I mean, do you say 5% on a barn dominium, 10%? Like, what's reasonable as far as kind of the, the cost difference? Yeah, so in the barn dominium world, there's a lot of folks that really are trying to do this, uh, act as their own general contractor. In many cases, probably about um, 35 or 40 percent of our clients are going to GC their own barn dominion built. So they could save quite a bit of money because they're not paying, you know, 18, 20 percent to a builder right off the bat sure. uh, for them. But they do have some other expenses. They still have to you know, want to have insurance just in case you want to have independent inspectors, those kinds of things. So it's going to cost you some money and you're going to make some mistakes along the way, um, but hopefully not too, too expensive mistakes. Right. Uh, but so you won't save uh, you know, that 18 or 20 percent. Let's say you save 15 or 17 percent. That's still a lot of money. Um, the other thing is that you can negotiate much better uh, on deals than, say, your builder could, because your builder's probably not buying at a secondhand shop, which you might find a beautiful sink at a secondhand shop and decide to use that versus a new sink because the builder has to warranty that. So there's there's ways you can save money. Overall, I would say that if you're acting as general contractor, and you're a good shopper, depending on the design and where you build, I'm saying you probably save between 12 and 15 well, percent. That's, um, that's, a, that's, that's a lot of money. If you are hiring a general contractor uh, to do the same build, now you're, you're uh, really close to what it's going to cost to build a traditional home. Walk me through the process of, of a barn. What's the start to start, starting point to end point of of building a barn dominium. I mean, are there barn dominium kits? How does it work? Yeah, so there's lots of great information that are, that's out there on the social media. Just make sure that the whatever channel that you're listening to is giving you real information because there's some things that are out there, some information out there saying you can build a barn dominium for $70 a square foot. I can't get there. I can't, I, you know, I add up with the concrete costs. I, I know what the windows cost. I, I start adding up the materials and labor and I can't get there. So make sure you're, you're getting it from a reliable source. Two, you can get um, a plan that's on the internet that you can purchase from, from a, a designer, or you can do a custom, but you're going to need a plan because the bank can't talk to you really about what you're going, about the money they're willing to give you unless they've got a plan. Um, the builder can't give you anything these days unless they've got a plan in hand. So I say start looking for your land. Also start uh, working on your design simultaneously if you're trying to get in sooner than later. If you have more time, maybe you shop for the land first. And then after you find the land, find your designer. But those two are pretty close in um, close to, to, the, to the starting points. Okay. And then once you have your land, in other words, like your company, for example, you design the barn dominiums and then you also have 
You also have set designs that they can purchase. I mean, how, do, how does that aspect of things work? So we have um, about 40% of our business comes outside the state of Texas. And a lot of the people around here really like some of our stock floor plans with some modifications. So we have hundreds of stock plans that we can modify uh, to make just right. It's less expensive and you can get that quicker. Then we have probably about 85% of our business is true custom. It's 100% custom work. And so there, you know, we've got a little bit more time. It takes a little, a little longer to, to get that and costs more because it's, it's all custom. Um, so we have people anywhere in between, anywhere from purchasing a stock just the way it is, to doing a modified stock, to doing a full set of custom. And then depending on where you live, we might be able to point you in the direction of some steel suppliers and some builders. Okay. So you really helped facilitate this and make it a pretty seamless operation for the, for the end user? Yeah, we try to make this as easy as possible. We also have uh, banks that we can um, uh, refer you to who loan money for Barnuminiums. Uh, so we're trying to, we're not a one-stop shop, but we're, we're getting pretty close to it. All right. So you did talk about the financing. Is, is the financing harder on a Barnuminium than a typical house or is it about equal? Um, so there's a couple of things that's been happening in the market. I, I say this was going on as a perfect storm. We had COVID hit. Um, and at the same time where uh, big communication companies were putting in high speed Internet and cell phone service out into the country, you had more people who now are able to work from home. OK, and so now that more people are moving out to the country, banks have been opening up to being able to loan more and more money out in the country. So banks are opening up. Uh, they want to know if, if they're building, if they're going to finance a Barnuminium, does it look good? Is it built to code? Does it have a nice resale value? So banks are, are starting to come around who said no to Barnuminiums forever and ever. who are now saying, you know what, some of these are, are really rivaling custom homes. And so we're going to treat them that way. Uh, we've got several banks here in Texas that said, hey, if it's a second, if it's a sale of a Barnuminium that's already built, um, and someone is selling it, we're not going to treat it as a barn dominium. We're going to compare it to other uh, custom homes in the neighborhood. So I think banks are starting to look at, at, at barn dominiums in a different way. Are there, are there different zoning restrictions for barn dominiums that you need to be concerned about? Yes. So a lot of barn dominiums, depending on where you are in the country. So if you're along the coast at all, in Florida, uh, anywhere in Galveston, um, Corpus, anywhere along the, the Gulf Coast, you've got wind. And so the wind loads have been going up substantially for residential uh, homes. We've seen it in Florida Keys go as high as 180 mile an hour right. wind loads that a home had to be built to. Usually you didn't see homes having to be built to that, that strength, but now you do. Um, or if you're in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, or, the, or where you have snow, you've got those loads, and then you've got those in California for earthquake. Um, then I would also check with your local, if you've got a POA, Property Owners Association, or an HOA, to see if there's any rules in their architectural guidelines that permit you from having uh, metal sides. Um, I would definitely check that out. Um, and then check with your lo local county rules, because the county for the build, uh, residential build permitting office will have a list of can and cannots for your county. Anything else that, um, that, that our audience really should know about Barnuminiums that we've missed here, Stacey? Yeah, I think Barnuminiums are going to be around for, they have been around for a long time, but I think they're going to be super popular and really be around for a long time for lots of reasons. One is they're different. They're different than your traditional build. Um, they've got that kind of like that modern, uh, that modern vibe to it that harkens back to, to farmhouse or barn look. Um, which I think is very appealing to folks. I think more and more folks are moving out to the country, giving a little bit more elbow room, a little bit more distance between them and their neighbors. Uh, and I think people want to have something that's low maintenance and energy efficient. And that's what you get out of a metal building. It uses less wood to build. So if you are concerned about the environment, um, you're using less wood to build a barnuminium. Um, and the last thing about barnuminiums, it's about the lifestyle. It's not just about the build, it's about the, the relaxation and enjoying nature and sitting out on the on the front porch and having that morning coffee at, before you get your day started, um, or just going ahead and relaxing at the end of the evening 
with maybe um, some grilled vegetables and a little music overhead and a glass of wine. Right. Um, it's about a, it's about a lifestyle. Yeah. And so so speaking of the popularity of these things, you know, a few years ago, I'd never really even heard of a Barnuminium. Now it's all I hear about is, is is the popularity growing that much or or is it just you hear about hear about it more nowadays? Uh, the popularity is really growing. If you we always say Google knows everything about every subject. Right. So if you go to Google Trends and you type in the word Barnuminiums and you do the five year trend line. And the five-year trend line is up, it goes just like this. And then all of a sudden in summer of 2020, it does this. It takes almost a straight up, almost a straight up uh, look at what's happening with Barnum and Eames. So uh, Barnum and Eames are always popular, but now I think more and more people are learning what a Barnum and Eames is. Great. Well, thank you, Stacey. Um, yes. Really appreciate you taking the time to do this and, um, I would recommend anybody that's thinking about getting a Barnuminium and, and needs a expert designer to check out Stacy and her website, rbarnuminiumlife.com. Yes, that's it. You can view all the colors that Western States Metal Roofing has to offer by checking out the online color visualizer. Try it for free by visiting westernstatesmetalroofing.com. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.